Currently, we are experiencing relatively very low cases. We have recorded um, low cases. So the average daily is about less than 20, and we have a weekly average of less than five per, per week. So that tells you that the numbers are quite uh, low. Currently, 12 regions do not have any active case, which means there are 12 out of the 16 regions that do not have any cases at all. We don't have anybody who is on admission, severe or critical, anywhere in Ghana so far. There's been a significant de decline in the number of cases reported at the airport for those few people who are tested. The land borders are open, and a little over 14 million of our population have received at least uh, a vaccine. But unfortunately, the vaccine uptake has reduced, and that is so because uh, the low risk perception, but the essence we want to highlight is the fact that this is the best time to um, get vaccinated. So that we fetch water when it's the dry season, uh, when it's raining, and then when the dry season comes, we have some water to take. Currently, we have so far recorded about 161,172 cases since the outbreak, and we've done over 2,000, 2 nearly 4, over 2.4 million tests have been done. Of this, uh, 160,159 have recovered. Unfortunately. We have lost 1,445, and I must say in the last two or so months, we've not had any uh, COVID-related deaths yet. Currently, our latest uh, active cases is 40. Like I said, no severe, no critical case. Now, how do we compare ourselves with um, the rest of Africa? In terms of total number of cases, Ghana has recorded over 161,000. This is as at March, so that's why it's 160,000. Uh, ECOWAS has recorded about 901,000. That's the 16 countries of ECOWAS. And Africa has recorded about 11 million plus. We have significant recoveries, as mentioned. Case fatality rate for Ghana, that is uh, the proportion that, is, that dies after the number. Is 0 0.9. The lower, the better. And so, West Africa has 1.3, but the African average is 2.2. So that tells you that the management has been uh, much better because the risk of dying is lower in Ghana compared to uh, ECOWAS and uh, African average. We've also done 2.4 million tests. That means that for tests per thousand population, which are internationally uh, fig, uh, data record is 75 as at March. As we speak now, we are doing about 79.8 per thousand population in Ghana. West Africa has an average of 36 and Africa 73. So we have a higher figure than the African average. I think this is a very usual chart you see. This is the, the waves. The last one was the tallest but the shortest. Uh, that's the uh, Omicron one. You have the Alpha. The, the first one was the, the original version. You have the Alpha, we have Delta, and then we have the Omicron. So you can give them their different the names. The waves can have their own name, but they are dominant uh, variants there. The, these are the usual charts. You can look at the active cases and the, the most region that has received the most, and it hasn't changed. We can see that our active cases are in now in Upper East, Bono, um, Shanti, and Greater Accra. The rest of the country has no active case, as I said. So those four regions are where we have cases. The majority are in Greater Accra. That's why the color of Greater Accra is slightly deeper than the rest. I think this also shows the trends in active cases. Um, since uh, it was um, around February or early March when it dropped, it's remained quite low, virtually flat on the x-axis till now. Now, um, 
This is just the airport the total average of total so far tested positivity of 0.87 percent, and uh, the majority are non Ghanaians. It's just the own usual slide. Now, currently, all our borders are opened to human and tra um, human traffic and trade. Uh, Togo, Burkina Faso, and Cote d'Ivoire are yet to open their borders, and so. That means the Ghana border is open, the others are not open, but uh, we know that despite the closure, there are still trade still comes through, trucks are allowed to pass through, so those are things. And of course, there are people who find some way to get, to get through it. So all the international travelers who are coming through are screened, and um, we are still in negotiation with our neighboring country to see how we can synchronize activity or testing or whatever, but we are not going to do any tests for now. But we have means of testing that I'll take you details on how we do. The Ghana's travel advisory, we've done a revision of the travel advisory. We always do, this is a 14th version that tells you if you are coming to Ghana, these are the things you need to have. These are the things you need to do to be able to qualify to enter. So that has been uh, that the details will tell you whether, for example, do you wear mask in the airport terminal, that will be there. Do you need to be fully vaccinated to come in? Or if you are not vaccinated, these are the conditions. So this is the advisory, which is always on the, the KIA website and sometimes on Ghana Health Service website. So what are these? Pre-arrival requirements. International travelers, um, other Ghanaian, non ghanaians some foreign residents, were required to be fully vaccinated prior to departure. And when we say you are fully vaccinated, Johnson & Johnson, one dose is classified as fully vaccinated, and the others are two doses. Uh, booster is um, bonus, but you need to be, that's what we define fully vaccinated. And we take the vaccines that are registered in the five vaccines that are registered in Ghana, and we added four or so more that are WHO pre-listed. What it means that it's been approved globally by WHO, but Ghana has not. And so that one, people come in are uh, allowed to come in with that. Um, and every traveler will have to fill the Ghana Health Service Declaration form. So we need to know where you have been the last two weeks, as we've been doing during Ebola and now, because we still have breaks in other parts of the country. So if you are coming to a place where there's a risk, there, there, there's an outbreak there, then your risk level is higher, and so we may want to to keep an eye on you. So that one is done, and that's uh, it's an online application. For Ghanaian and foreign residents who live in Ghana, uh, the full vaccination prior to travel to Ghana for eight persons, 18 years and above, uh, fully vaccinated will be exempted from the pre-departure COVID-19. If you are fully vaccinated, you'll be exempted from the pre-departure COVID-19 PCR from the point of embankment. Uh, we also be exempted from tests on arrival if you are fully vaccinated. If you are partially vaccinated or unvaccinated, you will be required to present a negative PCR, not 72, this time 48 hours prior to travel, and you undergo the COVID-19 testing on arrival. And if you are not, you are also offered a vaccination on arrival, either at the sea, airport, or on the land, and we have systems there that offer these vaccines. So this is for Ghanaians and foreigners who are resident in Ghana. Otherwise, if you are not vaccinated, you are not allowed to come in at all. And persons uh, 18 years, uh, below 18 years. For non ghanaians you must provide the full evidence of vaccination status to the airline prior to embankment. For land borders, the traveler will be held responsible and for the transit passengers, will be required to have a full proof of vaccination status, even if when you are doing transit in Ghana. So the next ones are the, are the border posts. We do general fiscal screening of the travelers, doing temperature monitoring, etc. You do a physical verification of a COVID-19 vaccination card. So the portal will have um, the samples of the other countries so that they can check. We also do a digital verification 
of the COVID-19 vaccination, specifically using the Panavirus platform, which gives us information as to whether it's a genuine uh, card or it's a fake card. So that one is done. And of course, you continue to inspect the yellow fever vaccination card at all levels, especially in the land borders where we have our neighbors still having some cases of yellow fever. So at the vaccination at the borders and NID, we say we are giving some vaccination. Uh, vaccination of unvaccinated travelers who arrive at the border, mostly Ghanaians and foreign uh, students are vaccinated. You cannot prevent the Ghanaian from coming home. So vaccination of border residents as part of the COVID-19 ongoing NIDs. I mean, you know how our borders are. The same town, one chief, one half is one country, the other half. So to promote and protect ourselves, we do vaccination at the border to ensure that those people who are virtually coming in and out are also protected. Um, we also provide logistic support for vaccination activities at the airport, at the, port, at the border post. So now we've made some significant changes at our border posts, and these are a um, photo gallery of um, at the KIA where people who arrive unvaccinated are vaccinated. Um, one of the land borders where the team is there to vaccinate those who need to be vaccinated. Um, the Jewiwav, Semenye, Akano, these are all our land borders where there's evidence of vaccination ongoing on. We are also lab developing laboratories to put one in Aflao, Elubo, and Paga. This is the model. It's almost 80% uh, complete, and we hope that very soon all these laboratories will be there so that people can be tested. Uh, um, that will be done with support from uh, UNDP and other partners. Now, we had a certain number of uh, ports that were also not manned by Port Health. There's an ongoing process to man all of them, and these are some of the offices, prefabs that have been put there to ensure that Port Health presence is felt to protect us as and when people are coming in. As you know, now there's an outbreak of Ebola in DR Congo. Okay? So these are all important systems that we need to continue to upgrade to protect ourselves. Uh, this is the Lekpebi Bafda 41. So these are already in place and uh, it's currently working. So these are some of the logistics that have been sent to our border post to ensure that once the border is open, we remain safe and all the necessary stuff are carried out. So, okay. So if you are coming as a traveler, what are you supposed to do? You have to upload your vaccination card onto the Panobio Strated uh, travel platform. So... You create uh, an account on the site and you're able to upload your, your vaccine card or you use the UNDP endorsed Global Haven site, which is www.globalhaven.org. You can upload there. We will get it here so that we know that by the time you arrive here, we know that you are vaccinated and this is that you have a genuine card before you are. So Portal will have this information before you arrive in Ghana. So the fully vaccinated record, called the batch number, manufacturer, vaccination date, etc., are all keyed onto the platform. You upload the vaccination card, and the system will verify your vaccine record and issue you with a code and a pass. And that's the code and the pass that you come here because portals will have had that information with you. So where are we as far as our vaccine? State of vaccination, I mean the vaccine itself, our quantity. We so far received 13, 30 million 378,000 plus. Uh, they've all been um, distributed. We distributed 23 million already. Some are still in the regions currently being used. And at the national level, we have about 6.6 .6 waiting for redeployment should the, the numbers go down in the region. Majority of our vaccines are still remain AstraZeneca. Um, so far, 
we've had about nine, for those who have received one dose, it's about 9.491 million, which accounts comes about 47.5%. So we still have some way to go. For 29.9% uh, of the population. For the fully vaccinated, we've done about 5.8 million of them, count about 29% of the 20 million that we have targeted, and about 18% of the total population. We have about 360,000 people who have received their booster since we started. The, as you know, this disease is more prevalent in the urban areas. But so with the vaccination, so far about 63 point, of those vaccinated, 63, 2.3 are from the urban areas, while 37.7 are in the rural areas. And as usual, more females are vaccinated compared to the males. So we need to also work on that to ensure that more men get vaccinated. And of course, the youth, especially those below 18, still remains a higher number of population who are yet to be vaccinated, even though we are vaccinating up to 15. Okay, so if you look at the vaccination drive, which we really scaled up since December. In December, we vaccinated about two point, we gave out about 2.9 shots. Uh, January, it dropped after the Christmas festivities to about 1.6. In February, we did another hype of campaign. We did about 4.1 million doses in February alone. March was 1.63. There were a series of activities in March, so it dropped. April, we have so far done 9.59. But remember, we only started the campaign a few days ago. We are hoping that it drove into... Uh, next month and be able to get more vaccination than in May. Uh, I think this one is not too, too clear, but that shows you that the, 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 the vaccination that has been so far done by region and the total population that have been vaccinated in the regions. So far, uh, the schools um, We've done some vaccination, about 340 or so thousand, and we continue to, to do that. That is those uh, under 15. As those who have done between 15 and 17 years, that's the number. That some are in school, some are out of school. So that's the number we've done. If you look at the ranking in terms of total number of vaccines done, uh, Greater Accra is the first when it comes to the first dose, but they are the, the tenth when it comes to fully vaccinated. So it's a, it's a balance. So we still have a significant number of people who have had their first dose, but they've not gone for their second dose in Greater Accra. And if you look at which we'll be share with you, you can see that they are uh, the, the least vaccinated is. Um, Savannah, in terms of absolute numbers, of course, if you look at the proportion, that will also change. But they also had probably the lowest number of cases in the country. But when it comes to fully vaccinated, they are eighth. And so it's a balance. So every region has been encouraged to ensure that they get as many people fully vaccinated uh, as possible. But what we need to understand is that if you, are, you don't have had not enough cases and there's another outbreak, you are at more risk because you don't really have any protection. And so that's the message you are telling. I don't say it because we don't have cases here, we will not get vaccinated. Because when you have another outbreak, it is those unprotected that will be uh, at risk. Remember recently we had uh, an epidemic of the unvaccinated in Europe, and I think we don't want to move into that stage. I think the same slide goes on. So, how are we doing to improve vaccination? We want to continue the periodic campaigns. We've done one in February, we are doing April, we do May and June, or moving towards a target of making sure that 20 million is done. We are also going to have special vaccination because we are discussing with the education to give us one weekend where we'll move into all secondary schools 
and do mass vaccination. We want to do um, enhanced um, advocacy drive, COVID-19 campaigns, um, advocacy film, etc., to ensure that we whip up, and of course, with the help of the media, more people will take up the opportunity to uh, vaccinate. Because the lowest, there's a low hanging fruit that we need to do to protect ourselves from the next uh, outbreak. As you know, China still has lockdown, so nobody should ever think that Korea also had had a surge that. We are low and so we are free. But this is an opportunity to really get protected. So it shows that should there be any threat, we are all protected. <coughs> the next slide. I think, um, how many of us are not wearing masks? Mine is here. Well, the president said it's not compulsory. He didn't say don't wear it. I think that's what I heard. He said it's not mandatory. He didn't say don't wear the risk is still there. And so we recommend that where possible, wear your mask. And especially when you are in an enclosed and a congested place, you need to. I'm, I won't enter a lift without a mask. You know, a small place, eight people, you never know. You know, so the most important enclosed and congested places. Where possible, put wear your mask. If you are in an aircraft, small tube, 50, 60 people, one hour, 40, 25 minutes, 45 minutes, nothing, air, no air, air exchange. I don't think it is right. It will be safer to wear your this thing. Schools, we encourage that they continue wearing their mask because 15 years and below, those below 15 years have not been vaccinated. So they still remain a threat, a potential threat to them. And I think once you look at the enclosed and congested place, you can define yourself. You can, as I said, define which one is enclosed and um, congested, whether it's an office, whether it's in a banking hall, you need to wear. But we have to, we are grateful to the banks for ensuring, insisting that everybody must continue to wear their mask. Yeah. So what's our outlook going forward? Our various in interventions have contributed to a general reduction in the cases, but this is not to say that the pandemic is over. It's not over at all. Some countries are experiencing a worse form of the pandemic, as we just mentioned. So we need to maintain our focus at preventing the worst case scenario. But vaccination, 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 that is the most important intervention that we need now so that we can all be free and go up about business. We have enough vaccines and it's free, so the message is let's get vaccinated and still let's provide some of the protection, some of the hand washing, etc. has served us in many ways beyond COVID and I think these are all areas we need to remember. So thank you very much.